Jack Hills created the term hypervelocity star, HVS, in 1988 to describe a star ejected at 1,000 kilometers a second from the galaxy due to a three-body encounter with a massive black hole. This is where the Hills mechanism is drawn from. Hypervelocity stars are a result of massive black holes in any galaxy. But the ones we can see are the stars expelled from our own galaxy. A massive black hole, MBH, will periodically unbind some stars from the galaxy. In 2005, Warren Brown and his colleagues discovered a hypervelocity star with a radial velocity of 700 kilometers per second, which is more than three times the solar velocity. This star is traveling so fast that its velocity is high enough to escape the Milky Way. So, let's answer the question, what is the Hill's mechanism? The Hill's mechanism is a mechanism that Jack Hills theorized in 1988, whereby stars are ejected at high speeds from the galaxy's center after a binary stellar system gravitationally interacts with a supermassive black hole at the galaxy's center. In such a three-body interaction, supermassive black hole, and stars, one star can be ejected at extremely high speeds, while the other remains in the central region of the galaxy on a highly eccentric orbit. The presence of several highly eccentric short-period stars in the galactic center suggests that associated hypervelocity stars may exist. Many more hypervelocity stars have been identified after the first one was discovered in 2005. Jack Hills came to the intriguing conclusion that binary stars in the Milky Way should collide with the supermassive black hole and produce hypervelocity stars at a rate of 10 to 4 to 10 to 3 stars each year. This is a high enough rate for such stars to be observable. In addition, a star that is moving 1,000 kilometers a second travels 33,000 light years in 10 million years. So, there should be roughly between 1,000 to 10,000 hypervelocity stars within 33,000 light years of the galactic center. And an order of magnitude more should fill the outer halo region surrounding the Milky Way. Hills's concept drew surprisingly little interest. In 1993, a science fiction writer, Paul McCauley, released a novel titled Eternal Light, which featured a hypervelocity star launched toward our solar system by unfriendly aliens. A decade later, astrophysicist Ching Cheng Yu and Scott Tremaine postulated a mechanism in which a pair of supermassive black holes could eject stars from the galaxy. Despite the rising acceptance of supermassive black holes at the centers of galaxies, and consequently the existence of hypervelocity stars, those two papers reflect the entire interest in hypervelocity stars in the past years. In 2005, the situation changed with the discovery of the first hypervelocity star. Many predictions have surfaced, and increased observation has shown several surprising characteristics. Astronomers are investigating several links between hypervelocity stars and supermassive black holes, even though the observations do not yet allow for thorough tests. The Milky Way Center contains the best studied image of a supermassive black hole and its surroundings, infrared, radio frequency, and X-ray observations that penetrate the dust of the galaxy's intervening spiral arms provide us with information about the region. These observations reflect a complex and diverse place. In the galaxy's central light year, hundreds of luminous short-lived stars orbit, while million solar mass streams of molecular gas and huge young star clusters orbit in the galaxy's central hundred light years. The time scale for scattering stars into the black hole's loss cone, the phase space of orbits on which an item will encounter the black hole, determines the rate at which stars encounter the supermassive black hole. The common assumption is that stars on loss cone orbits are rapidly annihilated. Therefore, dynamical processes that replenish the empty loss cone determine the steady rate at which stars hit the black hole. 
One of the most common dynamical processes is two-body gravitational interactions that distort object trajectories. Suppose the Milky Way has a spherical distribution of stars. In that case, the loss cone for interactions between a supermassive black hole and a binary star should theoretically remain empty out to distances of 300 light years because the tidal disruption radii of binary stars are 10 times larger than those of single stars. In actuality, in the Milky Way's central 100 light years, enormous molecular clouds, star clusters, and other massive objects dominate the two-body gravitational interaction rate and rapidly refill the black hole's loss cone for binary star interactions. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and click the notification bell so you do not miss any upcoming videos.